Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Um, I woke up this morning to news that was not really news at all. After weeks of revelations about Hunter Biden's laptop from hell and the extent to which Joe Biden has been compromised by payments by the Chinese Communist Party, funneled to him by his son through a 10% stake uh, in the loot. After weeks of revelations of massive electoral fraud right across the country, but mostly in swing states, trucks arriving in the dead of the night with thousands of ballots, almost all for Biden, ballot stuffing, the exclusion of any prying eyes that would pick up what was happening, voter machines that were pre-programmed to vote for Biden, etc, etc. We now have Biden being declared the winner by the media. So much for waiting for the official results from state governors and going through a legal and constitutional process. So just listen to what Mayor Rudy Giuliani has to say. Because they don't decide the election. The call for Joe Biden isn't, is who was it called by? All the, oh my goodness, all the networks. Wow. All the networks. We have to forget about the law. Judges don't count. All the networks, all the networks. All the networks thought Biden was going to win by 10%. Gee, what happened? Come on, don't be, don't be ridiculous. Networks don't get to decide elections. Courts do. Of course, courts set aside elections when they're illegal. In this particular case, I don't know if there's enough evidence to set aside the entire election. Certainly not around the country, maybe in Pennsylvania. However, there certainly is enough evidence to disqualify a certain number of ballots. The ballots that were not properly inspected should be thrown out. And that number of ballots should be taken out of the count. That could affect the election. Where has the Epstein scandal gone? Elaine Maxwell is, it is true, in jail. But her various victims are still... Um, I, 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 I are still without justice and one Maria Farmer is suffering the pain of cancer treatment all the while being uh, subject to abuse on social media. Do I think that there will be any uh, justice in this? No, not a bit. Where is the justice? What happened to the story about Hunter Biden and the corruption of Joe? that will lead to the country under his leadership being in thrall to the Communist Party. So just see this. Instead, the media right across the world is celebrating the end of Donald Trump and Biden winning a rigged election, all the while pretending that this is free and fair when it is as bad as anything in any banana republic and way worse than anything Putin's Russia can be accused of. As the quote ascribed to Stalin, Joseph Stalin says, it is not who votes that counts, it is who counts the vote. So I don't have a crystal ball that I can look in to see what is coming next. I can only imagine. However, I'm going to look at something else today, uh, and that is the question of how we should be with all of this. It is unusual that I see or hear anything inspiring these days, but I can say this about an interview 
that I heard was false flag researcher uh, Ollie Dummergaard. Um, he can only be one of three things, insane, a liar, or a teller of truth. If nothing else, he's a compelling storyteller and he has heart and conscience and that is enough to tell me that I can dismiss the first two categories of him being insane or a liar and lead me to suspect uh, that he is a truth teller. And like everybody else, he's not perfect. He did get things wrong about the Christchurch massacre. However, he has quite a story to tell. It was quite long and not at all boring. So I shall leave a link to his interview in the comments section below. But allow me to briefly encapsulate what he said from my own memory. While researching a false flag terror attack in Sweden, he came across a leaked talk by a Swedish um, terrorist, terrorism special, uh, official. Dummergaard recognised the code in his language and picked up what he was saying and took it further. And um, he found, this is making it very, very simple, he found a Twitter account for him and a discussion where he talked about 31 terror operations, terror, 31 uh, false flags in one day in Europe. In short, he decided, Demigard decided to go public and to put out a warning on radio stations around Europe. So the date came and went, but nothing happened, and Demigard thought he must have been wrong. But then he was told by a contact in Brussels that there had been an emergency meeting of NATO in which there was blind panic, and his contact told him it was all because of him and his warning. On the same day, all Israeli embassies and consulates were closed because of a general strike. <laughs> and Trump came out with a claim that they had killed ISIS leader al-Baghdadi for the fourth time. So all of this corresponded with uh, Event 201 that was a drill for the release of a virus set in South America but included Chinese health officials. And it was also at this time that the World Military Games were held in Wuhan, China. So, uh, Ole Damagard hypothesized that there were meant to be 31 flag attacks in Europe on one day, uh, including on the port of Rotterdam, uh, while a bioweapon was to be released in Wuhan and spread around the world by soldiers from the um, military games returning to their home countries. So it didn't happen that way, he says, because part of the plan was averted because of his warning, which he put across um, many, many radio stations in Europe and around the world. So that left just the virus. So I really recommend that you don't rely on my retelling, but go and listen to his entire interview. But the reason I'm telling you all of this is because of some other things that he has to say that relate to how I think that we should relate um, to the latest news. And But it's beyond countries it's not a matter of the u.s france israel it is the new world order uh, so-called elite i have a lot of words that is not so flattering to them but they are way up at the top of the pyramid but there's uh, one major misunderstanding they say, say to us that the pyramid is pointing upwards that pyramid the top of the pyramid is pointing straight down it is into the darkest of the dark of crap 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 that is where the elite is. These are not, uh, I would say, I don't even know if the same race as the rest of us, but I mean, they're super, super psychopaths where you can't really blame them because many of them are born psychopaths. So they don't have empathy in the system. They don't have 
compassion. They don't have the emotions that say, don't hurt anyone else. They are just there for their ego, for their power, for their whatever it is they're looking for. I don't know. I don't get it. And, and one time I've interviewed a CIA whistleblower, Chip Tatum, who was actually the commander of George Bush Sr.'s private hit team Pegasus, and he was part of carrying out 14 assassinations. So he knows this beast from the inside. And I said, I, I just don't get, I don't understand the mentality behind these operations. And he said, well, it's very simple. If you were a psychopathic killer, that would, it would make perfect sense. But now you're not, so you don't get it. Because it's absolutely upside down. We sort of worship the light and we upwards, they worship the darkness and downwards. So it's like plus and minus on a battery or yin yang. It's you can't, you can't meet really. The only thing I can do is do my absolute utmost to stop it. You know, I, I cannot accept when people get hurt or it goes all the way from a bully in the schoolyard. I will stop the bugger. You know, because it's always something, somebody big pounding the shit out of some small little individual. It's never the other way around. So I will do anything to defend the weak and the defenseless and, and help them stand up in their own truth because it's so not OK. And the key to this whole thing is not violence. It is no. They need evil, need our consent. That is part of the setup of this uh, universe. If the, it doesn't get our consent, it cannot carry it out. And so evil always comes disguised, disguised as something really nice, really kind, really beautiful. That's how evil uh, operates. You know, otherwise we would say, oh, my God, there's an evil person. And you would just say, I'm not getting anywhere near close to this guy. So it needs to sneak up on us with some really, you know, glossy nice cover and some fancy name but it's 180 degrees wrong false and that is why i think since we've been so much up our own butt and so much uh, involved with our own greed and x factor and eating pizza and changing channel whatever not caring about our neighbors or our fellow human beings while doing that we have allowed these people that have worked very hard for many many years to concentrate the power to fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer. And now we're in a situation where they're pushing us up into the corner saying, we have to, we have to become aware. And this is a beautiful time to find out who are you? This is a time to look yourself in the mirror and say, who are you? Because all those different shades of gray are gone. It's black or white. That's it. Boom. And it's very painful to see, you know, old friends separating, friend, families separating, whatever, because it's like a filtration going on where we have to sort of make a stand and say, what, what is important for you? Is, is the world important for you? Is nature important for you? Is your children's future important for you? Is your desires more important for you? Do, will you accept whatever just to not take responsibility to not stand up and and face conflict is it uh, more important for you to just bend over and uh, let yourself be guided and and controlled by fear and propaganda or do you prefer a life where truth matters where courage the big morals like uh, honesty and beauty and and these things what is what is important to you and right now, I tell you, they, it's like a gladiator game. We're in, the, in an arena where the darkness, the evil and good love is fighting each other. So do you want to be up on the, in, uh, you know, the seating area, the VIP area, or do you want to be down, be part of making the shift? Because history do not look gently on traitors or people that uh, betrayed each other or backstabbed each other for their own good. N history normally celebrates the heroes that stood up, like David and Goliath, stood up. Doesn't matter if they got killed or whatever, then they turned into martyrs. They would still be worshipped by a lot of people saying, my God, look at these people. They dare to do that. That is amazing. 
I mean, so many movies have been made on this script. And so, you know, the hero's journey, all of these things with the archetypes. So who are you? That's that's the thing that this pandemic is offering us. And indirectly, we have to to thank these absolute assholes who are forcing us to see who are you? Are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? And I say, I don't judge the sinner, I judge the sins, you know. So the sins is absolutely not acceptable. I will die to transcend this whole thing and be part of making this a beautiful, beautiful world for all of us. But I will I do not judge them as individuals or divine beings that are indirectly helping us to to trans come to this point because we have been life has been saying, wakey wakey. Hello, are you listening? And we have not. So it's a point now where, okay, then here's the sledgehammer. So it's smack in our forehead. Corona. That's it. Boom. You have, this is a major wake up call. Either we go down or we go up. The choice is ours. And uh, this is his, uh, his prayer. Yeah, a prayer. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May everyone, and especially the ones who hurt us, especially the ones who hurt us, be filled with peace and joy, love and light. May the light of truth overcome all darkness, so victory to that light. Without them, Andrew, we would not have met. Without them, we would, the humanity would not have this amazing chance to impress itself and excel and stand up for what is true and right. You know in your heart, the heart will tell you. Get out of your brain, into your heart, and that's the way forward. I've also been listening to True News, who have been quite white hot recently in their warnings about a coup and the civil war. Um, but uh, they've been quite sort of um, mild, I suppose, and understated in their reaction to the stolen election. And Rick Wiles has been counselling Trump to maintain his dignity and accept the results of a stolen election. And he gives some personal um, anecdotes of his own when he he also stood for public office and he was subject to uh, vote rigging. No, I actually contemplated it last year. Go back and look at how many times Right Wing Watch misconstrued my words and and made it look like I said we got to go out in the streets and and, and advocate shoot a civil it up. war and when right wing watch knows all along that I was warning if both sides continue to inflame the situation there will be violence and my warnings were to stop the violence so I've been very aware that we're headed in this direction uh, both sides uh, ready to fight. And, and we're now, we're, we're being squeezed, we're being pushed into this, uh, this funnel. And, and we're coming to that point, which looks like it could be around December. Now, you know how I feel about December. I, right. I, get, I, get, I get very antsy every year in November and December. Why? Because years ago, Myself and, and my wife and members of my family and some friends, this is about 10 years ago, we all started having dreams about violence in America, and it was Christmas time. And I've told Doc, I've told others, I, I truly believe the Lord showed me something that was coming, and it would be in the Christmas season, whatever that is between Thanksgiving and New Year's, that it was going to be happening in, in the, the winter time around Christmas. And so ever since that time, and if I recall, those dreams were somewhere around 2010. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like all one time. It was spread out over months. Various members of my family and friends were having these dreams, and we're all going, what is this about? They all have Christmas in it. And so every year, I, I always get a little antsy when we get close to Christmas because I'm looking for signs of something like this happening. So Wow, I'm looking at this now. <laughs> this really looks like the scenario that we could have this violence taking place in, 
in um, 2020. I hope, I pray it isn't happening, um, but it's shaping up that way. And I, I don't like it. And I, I'm saying to our audience, don't get caught up into this drama. Don't let either side work you and deceive you and push you to do things that are not right. Do you have a right to defend your life and your family and your property and your church? Yes, defend. Do you have a a right to go on the offensive? No. We're not going to have a shootout in the United States of America. If somebody comes to my door planning to do violence to me or my family, they're going to meet with uh, adequate firepower. I'm not going to let, let them do it. But I'm not going out in the streets to settle a score. That's not the way we do things. And as Christians, we need to be on guard. But look, there have been revolutions, political chaos in country after country for 2,000 years of the church's history. And the church is still here. Somehow it, we've, we've made it through to this point. The church is always the stabilizing force in society. We have to stabilize the society. We have to be the salt and the light. But we all know that Trump doesn't have any dignity and he doesn't play the game, at least not first. So I don't think um, that that's going to happen. And so some of our worst fears might be realised. Ole Damagard has illustrated how ordinary people, researchers, can help to avert the worst plans so that we should never rest up for a single moment. And there is a battle between good and evil, even if it is never clear, as I pointed out in my last video, where we should place the dividing line. Remember the, the quote from Alexander Solzhenitsyn? It is not through being angry and hateful and violent that we can face down tyranny but through love. I have no idea where things are going to go. Now a senile and deeply compromised Joe Biden has been declared the next president by the media, never mind waiting for the process or for state authorities to make their pronouncements. I was quite struck by a photo of Christians praying outside a voting vote counting facility. They will of course be ridiculed uh, because of this, but I've not seen people from the conservative right rampaging, rioting and looting and burning things down. I've only seen people from the extreme left. Rednecks driving their trucks en masse and waving the US flag is not violence, and it's not the same as, as Antifa riots. I have a sinking feeling, I've had a sinking feeling for such a long time now about where all of this is going, and of course, what is happening with the US election it is inextricably linked with what Ole Damagard is saying, so about... Uh, yeah, the, the plans of the New World Order, about the uh, the pandemic, forced vaccination, um, uh, Tony Fauci and Bill Gates, etc., etc. So however imperfect uh, Donald Trump has been, he has acted as a doorstop for some of the most evil intentions of some of the worst people on the planet. And we cannot understand them because we are not like them. I have no answers really, but I suspect the answer lies with those of us that shine a light on the darkest corners and reveal the intentions of these dark forces and perhaps even manage to predict their actions. It may come to people in America having to use arms to defend their own homes and their dearest ones against attack, as um, Rick Wiles says, but nothing good can come from
from those like Steve Bannon and Hal Turner tell, telling people to become just like the others and be violent. This is the first time, understandably, that I will admit that I've seen anything like what the left has accused the right of doing, inciting violence and civil war. And um, whether it'll lead to that, well, we can only wait and see.